Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Check out the other awesome ways that you'll be able to use these papers. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back. To all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers, thank you all so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. In a recent video, I shared some new digital papers, and we used those papers to make these awesome notebook, note card combo set. So we had the refillable notepad on this side, and we had some nice little mini note cards with mini envelopes on this side these beautiful, vibrant, fun, springy, fruit-themed papers are all a part of a new 20-sheet paper pack that I have out on my website. And when I rolled it out, my focus was to show you how you can make these. But there are so many other ways that you can use the paper packs that I have on my website. And today I'm going to share with you a super awesome way to get another fun project from those papers. So today, y'all, we're going to have some peaches. And if you missed the video where I rolled out the four patterns, I will have it linked in the description box below because it's worth a look. We have limes, we have blueberries, we have strawberries, and we have peaches. And if you have made a purchase of the paper pack, this is going to give you yet another fun option to use those beautiful papers. And if you don't have the paper pack, you don't have to get it. You can use your own papers, just cut them down to the sizes that I will be sharing in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and flip to my overhead camera because y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at what we're going to be making today. Some of you will recognize this paper as the paper that I'm calling the banding paper. And that's because we can cut these out in strips to make belly bands, or as I did here, we make the band for the inside of the book. But this time, instead of cutting out strips, I decided to use that paper as the paper for this sweet little box. So that gives you an idea of the various ways that you can use those papers. Even though they were originally designed for one purpose, we are now creating another purpose. So what I've done here is I fussy cut the image from the jacket cover page and I used it as the decorative element on the front. And you can see it better when I lift up. So all I did was a little fussy cutting going around and I cut it out and then I attached it. Now we open it and you'll be able to see what I have on the inside. I have these cards and in the original video we folded these in half and I'll show you what I mean. I'll pull one out. We folded these to create a little note card. Well, this time we're not going to fold them. We are simply going to leave them out in like a postcard form. So you'll be able to stamp a little message or you can use some word ephemera or word stickers to put something on the front. And then you have your writing space on the back. So this is another way to use the note card sheet that is in the paper pack. And then I took one of the blank eight and a half by 11 inch sheets to make my envelope. So if you're going to make this particular project, however many cards you make, print off enough papers to be able to make the envelopes. And we'll make the envelopes together. So that is this beautiful little kit, y'all. I think it is adorable. I closed it with the magnet. This makes a great gift. It would be a great craft fair seller. Just fill it with cards and envelopes and have a whole farmer's market assortment using these vibrant colors and they will pull people over to your table like crazy because we're all drawn to bright colors. Even though bright might not be our thing, our eye is naturally going to pick up the bright colors before the more muted colors. So when finished, this measures six by four and three quarters and it is two inches deep. So here is the paper that I'm going to be using today. I've fallen in love with the lime paper, so I am using lime today. We'll be using this print. I have printed off two pages of the note cards and I printed off two pages to make the box. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut out the pieces to make the box. And again, I'm using what I was calling the banding page, but this time we're going to be using it for the box. So what I want is a certain amount of symmetry on this. And to get it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper on the eight and a half inch side, I'm going to trim it down to seven and a quarter. Of course, we wouldn't throw this away because this is a band. Then I'm going to rotate that seven and a quarter inch side and I'm going to slide it over to six. Another band. And now you can see that I do have symmetry. My two outer edges are the same and then everything on the inside is the same. So again, we'll take it on the eight and a half inch side. Let's move it down to seven and a quarter and cut. Rotate it and move it over to six and cut. And so now we have our two pieces for the box. Here's how we're going to do these. On the 11 inch side of our first piece, we're going to score it at four and three quarters and at six and three quarters. Then we take that second piece and we're going to score at four and three quarters, at six and three quarters, and at nine. And then we're going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And we are going to be joining these two pieces together. All right, so here's how we join this together. You're going to have the piece that has one, two, three, four panels. We're going to take this larger panel and we'll take the first piece, we have that first score that we made at four and three quarters, and then we have the score that we made at six and three quarters. That'll be the piece that you join to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to add a strip of tape right along the bottom. And I added the tape to the piece that has one, two, three, four panels. At the bottom of the fourth panel, I added a strip of tape because I want to make sure that the bottom of that is nice and stuck to this one. So now I'm going to flip this side over and I'm going to add a strip of tape here at the top. I'll add a strip of tape here. And a strip of tape right here, just because I want to make sure that I have a really good stick. And so that you don't get confused on which side you need to place that tape, we're going to be placing the tape you're going to have two ends. This end will be wider than this piece. And so this is the piece on which we're going to place the tape on the back. And then one, two, three, four, wide panel. This is the piece on which we place the strip of tape on the inside. And then we're going to join the two. So let me just go ahead and remove my tape backers. Now ordinarily when I'm joining two pieces together like this, I would use glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. But in this particular case, my piece is really wider than I want to add glue, so I don't want any warping. And that is why I'm using tape. So now we're going to take this piece, and I'm only going to get one shot at this, so I'll try to get it as even as I can when I put it down like that 
don't think that that is all that perfect, but y'all know what? That's okay. So now we can take it and you can see that we have the initial shape for the box. So now I'm going to grab one of my polka dot sheets and you want to make sure that you are not using lightweight paper for this, that you're using the heavier weight paper. You use the lighter weight paper to print the envelopes, but for the box making, use your heavier weight paper. So we're going to cut this down to five and three quarters. And then we cut out two pieces that are three by five and three quarters. And so now we're going to score these pieces and we're going to score at half an inch on three sides. So that's half an inch on the two long sides and half an inch on one short side. Then on the second short side, we're going to score at five eighths of an inch. So again, we score at half an inch on three sides. And then on the fourth side, we score at five eighths of an inch. So now we're going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And once you have all of your scores folded and burnished, we are going to remove the corner pieces on all four sides. And when I remove the corner pieces, I'll angle in here on this flap. And then you can angle slightly on the outer flap as well. So let's just go ahead and do the same thing here. And let's do that over here. So now we'll take our glue and that piece that we scored at 5 eighths of an inch, we're going to add some glue on both. And we fold over. So we have our two pieces that look like this. Now I'm just going to fold these pieces backwards. I want them out of my way because I'm going to apply some glue to this little piece right here. And on this end, not the end where you have the flap folding over like that, we're going to take this piece and basically what we're going to do is we're going to join it to this piece like that. So I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. We join it like that and now I'll open it and you can see how that is. I'm going to use my glue to get that nice and stuck. We do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to fold these backwards because that gets them out of the way. And we're going to take this piece, add glue, and we basically glue it inside of the score marks. So let's just go ahead and place some glue right there. I'll take this piece and I'm just going to put it down close to the edge like that. And it is inside of my scores. So now I'm just going to take the glue and starting from the back panel, I'm going to place that glue we bring this piece up and we're basically matching it edge to edge like that. So now I just need to go in with my bone folder and really work that stick. And I have found that if you start from the back, that's going to make it a little bit easier I don't know why, but it just does for me. 
So I'm going to place my glue on this side now. I'll take this and I'm just going to smush it around a little bit. And then we just make sure it's nice and even like that. And I'll go in and we'll get that stuck. So now I'll fold this back. We'll take our glue and I'm going to put glue on both sides now. And I'm going to stick that there. And we'll make sure that we have it nice and even. And then we'll do the same thing over here. You can see that I have glue on my hands. Doesn't bother me at all. So once I know that I have it nice and even, I'm going to go in with my bone folder and we're going to get that stuck. Now you'll notice when you fold over, you're going to have a slight opening here at the top. Y'all, that's intentional because I want to make sure that we're not hitting it too close. So now I can open this and I'm actually going to put a couple of inserts on the inside just to strengthen the box a little bit. So I'm going to cut an insert at four and a half by five and seven eighths. And we're going to take that insert and place it in the back like that. I'm just going to take my tape runner, add some tape. And I'm using my tape runner for video making purposes here. But if I was making this to sell, I would be using my double stick tape, a good quality double stick tape, because you don't want this coming undone. So now I'm just going to take this and put it on the inside like that. Then we'll bring in another piece, and this time we're going to cut it at five and three quarters by five and seven eighths. And on the five and seven eighths inch side, I'm going to score it at one. Go ahead and fold that because I'll be taking it. And when I place it, I'm going to place it in like this. And then it'll fold over the front like that. So again, I'm going to take my tape. Still don't know how I feel about this tape runner. And I am just going to add tape here at the top. And then I'm just going to take this, put it in. And then I'll fold it over. And you can see that we have a nice inside front and back. And then we have a nice fold over on the front. So now I'm going to take my tape runner and I am just going to add some tape to this piece and we fold it in like that. And now I'm going to cut a piece. Let's see if that'll fit. Oh no. So now I'll be cutting a piece for right here. So I am going to trim this down to one and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. We are going to add our tape. And 
and I'll take this piece and we're going to place it right there. And so now y'all, we have a nice little box that will fold over like this. So let's go ahead and bring in the card paper and we are going to cut the card paper on the eight and a half inch side. We cut the card paper at four and a quarter. Then on the 11 inch side, we cut the card paper at five and a half. And this is how you get your four cards from one sheet. So on the 11 side, cut it five and a half. And we are going to do one more sheet. So on the eight and a half inch side, we're going to cut at four and a quarter. And on the 11 inch side, we're going to cut at five and a half. So now I have a total of eight cards for my box, but I need envelopes. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make one of our envelopes. And so to make the envelope, I do have an eight and a half by 11 inch piece. And on the eight and a half inch side, I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to seven and three quarters. Now to print the envelope, I did use text weight paper because I want a lighter weight paper for the envelope. So that is what I used. And so on the seven and three quarter inch side, we're going to score at one. Turn it to the opposite seven and three quarter inch side and score at one. Turn it to the 11 inch side and let's go ahead and score at four and a quarter and at eight and five eighths. So now we are going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And once you have all of your scores folded and burnished, we're going to go to the intersection of these folds and cut out like that. Cut out an angle like that because we want to free that flap. Do that on the opposite side and free this flap. Then we are going to start at the top of the score mark here. And as we're cutting down, we cut in. Cut in as you're cutting down. Same thing on this end. Cut in as you're cutting down and we are removing those corner pieces. And so now we have a very familiar envelope shape. So I am going to take my scissors and I'm just going to round my ends. This isn't something that you have to do. I just like the look of it. And if you don't have a corner rounder, you can see that doing it with the scissors works well. So now we're going to take these pieces and fold them in. The widest flap comes up like this. So I am just going to take a little bit of my glue, put a little bit there, a little bit there, and then we just need to add glue to the edge of our flap here. Now we can take it, fold up, and get that nice and stuck. Now I like to use text weight paper when I'm making envelopes, but that doesn't mean that you have to use text weight paper. If you want to make your paper using cardstock, you most certainly can. So now you have the envelope process and the process for cutting out these little note cards. Again, write anything that you want on them. You can stamp on these or you can use word phrases like I said earlier. We are going to take these. Let's go ahead and put them in our box so you can see that they fit. My guess would be that you can probably get 10 to 12 cards and 10 to 12 envelopes in here easily. So now we're going to go ahead and do that decorative piece for the front and then y'all, we will be finished. All right, so here is my image for the front and I am just going to use my detailing scissors to go in and cut out my image. And since this did not print, 
on solid white, I am cutting as close to the image as possible. I'm not using any type of a white offset. I'm just going in with my scissors and then at some point I'll get to a point where I need to use my finger blade to go into those really tight areas like that. So I am just going to do the rest with my finger blade because I'll start out with my scissors and I'll go back and do some detail cleanup with the scissors. But y'all, I really am just more comfortable using my finger blade. So let's just go up to here. Cut out. And if I find it to be a little bit jagged when I'm done, then I will go back with my scissors and do a little bit of fine cleanup. So we're almost done. So I'm just going to cut this out. And I'm actually okay with how that looks. All right, so before I put my pieces on, I'm going to go ahead and attach some Velcro. And we're going to use Velcro as our closure. So I'm going to put that Velcro right there. Then I can fold over, line this up. And we can get that Velcro nice and stuck. So I'll go on the inside and make sure that we have a good stick there. So now when we close it, we have a nice stick on this box. So now I'm going to take this piece and I think I'm going to put it on like this. So I'm just going to add some glue here at the top. And we're going to take this piece and put it right there. And so now y'all we have our sweet little lime box to go with the peach box. So now you can see a different use for that paper pack. I'm going to go ahead and just open this pull out our cards and just place them right there along with the envelope. Let's close this. I absolutely love the way that this has turned out and I think that those of you who got the paper pack will enjoy it too. If you haven't seen that video on the papers that are in the pack, it's a 20 pack set, I'll have it linked in the description box below. But I hope that you have enjoyed this fun way that you can take your 8.5 by 11 papers, whether they are digital or papers you've purchased from the store or online. I hope that you have enjoyed this way of being able to take those papers and turn them into something oh so stinking cute. If you have enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope that you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please, please, please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.